In this lecture, we're going to give you an introduction to a product called DripLine. It's probably the newest addition to drip irrigation, and it's really revolutionizing the way that agriculture is done all over the world. What we're looking at here is a Netafem product, and what it is is just basically a piece of half-inch tubing that has the drippers molded into the tubing at specific intervals. This particular product has different options that you can get 12 inches between the emitters, 18 or 24 inches between, depending on the usage that you want. And um, we'll go over some of the specifics in the next lesson about flow rates, the maximum amount that you can use on a lateral line, etc. But I just want to introduce you to this. Now, this is very similar to a product called Drip Tape. I'm not that crazy about drip tape because it's not as robust as the drip line is. It's not as thick. Drip tape collapses down when there's no water in the line. And then when it's filled back up, it expands back out and works basically the same. It has emitters molded in at specific places. But what I like about this style of drip line is, is that it's very robust. It's <clears throat> very resistant to kinks. So when you're laying it out, you know, it don't automatically go into a kink. It basically has the ability, if you treat it right, to stay in nice curves and not kink up. But that's one of the things that you're going to have to watch out for as you're installing these, is not put it into a situation to where it could be kinked. Now, with the drip tape, the way it works, you know, it collapses down and then expands back. It kind of lends itself to a little bit of kinking if it's not done in absolutely straight lines or if you're trying to do some curves and stuff in it, you may have to watch out for that. But you have different ways to apply this. Uh, this can be above ground or it can be below ground. And there's some options that you can get on this, especially for below ground applications. And now they're using this to go underground to do vast, you know, turf fields, sports fields, and so forth, so that, you know, it eliminates the, the heads and the things that come up, and it does a very good job. But if you're going to be doing this subsurface, I would recommend that you get a couple of options for it. And one of the options that Rainbird has is they put little copper plates down inside of the emitter to prevent root intrusion because that's going to happen if you don't do something to combat that in a subsurface installation. Roots will gravitate towards these little emitters and grow into them, clogging them up. Netafem has a, a drip filter that has a little ring that has some chemicals in that that also will prevent root intrusion. So that type of product, you need to make your own choice about what to use. Um, if you're using agriculture, you may or may not want to choose, you know, that product that has additional chemicals or whatever in it. I'm sure they're probably safe, but I'm going to leave that up to you. I just want to point out that those options are out there. And you can also get this drip line that has check valves in between each dripper. And that saves water that when the system shuts off, the, the valve shuts down, it traps the water that's in here. Otherwise, if you didn't have the check valves and there was any kind of tilt to the ground or whatever, the water may accumulate in the, the end of the leg and also push itself out. So what we're trying to do here, usually in agricultural situations and even in landscape situations, is that we're trying to get a very even watering, a very high level of uniformity. You know, with this, if it's done right, you can get a uniformity rate of 100% because basically these are molded in at precise intervals and if your plants that are at these same precise intervals, you can put the water exactly where you want it. And that's one of the things that this was developed for is was precise agriculture. And this has been used all over the world where water isn't as available as it is to us here in the U.S. And especially in the Southeast, we really don't have a whole lot of problems with the availability of clean water. But that's not true in other places in the world and especially in, in the American uh, Southwest where they're having a lot of droughts and so forth. You know, this type of drip really goes a long way. So <clears throat> let's talk about a couple of other things here. And um, that is the some of the different options. I mentioned before that you can get options in the way that the emitters are spaced. And what we're looking at here is actually a 12-inch spacing. But you can also get 
variation in the flow rate from each of these emitters. For uh, the NetFM product, I think you can get a 0.4 gallon per hour, 0.6, or a 0.9 gallon per hour dripper. So in the next lesson, we're going to go through and show how to calculate all of this out because it might get a little confusing to you if you're sitting down trying to think about each individual dripper at uh, this one's actually a 0.6 gallon per hour dripper. Um, so if you had to sit, sit down and calculate everything up, you know, per individual dripper, that can get really confusing. And when this product came out, we were all a little confused about how to use it, but you got to just sit down with the specifications that the manufacturer gives you, and then it all makes a whole lot of sense. So we'll do that in the next lesson. But um, this is a great product. It's something that I install all of the time. It's not right for every situation. Sometimes you'll want to use the other style, which is the traditional style of drip irrigation, of just a solid tube, and then we poke holes and insert the drippers where we want them. But we'll go over that in a different lecture. Let's take just a couple of minutes here and talk about the other kind of drip line that you can get, and that's the one quarter inch size. We're looking at a video here of a comparison between a half inch drip line and a quarter inch drip line. And what you're looking at here is a roll of landscape products version, but I'm pretty sure just about everybody makes a version of this now. Uh, so you can get it from uh, you know your favorite manufacturer. But what we're looking at here is a 12 inch spacing. It only comes in a six or a 12 inch spacing. And there's no options for the size of the drippers as far as the flow rate. Um, and on this particular one, I just wanted to point out that uh, this one has drippers on both sides of the pipe, 180 degrees apart. But you can also get half inch versions that has drippers on both sides versus a dripper just on one side. I'm not necessarily sure if the two drippers is superior to the one, but it probably is. Hard to tell out in the field. Just as long as the drippers are working, that's only all you really need to uh, watch out for. But um, we're going to go over the, the specifications of this in the next lecture, so you'll know exactly how to deal with it and how much that you can lay out and so forth.